Good morning, everybody. Yesterday we had a premiere. Um, I took a little bit of time off and went up to New Hampshire and Vermont to hang out with my friend Brad Condon. And his link to his channels on the front of my channel. He's got almost a, a thousand subscribers. And uh, you can see the New Hampshire and Vermont countryside on some of his videos and listen to him talk about his new dog. He's got a great new dog. It's a mini pit bull. Beautiful dog. I got to meet her. Her name's Nug. And um, check out his channel. So do that if you want. We didn't get any video fishing at all. Um, just because I just... That's the time I like to just spend a little time and not worry about filming and editing and all that stuff. It's kind of my time away from everything, you know. But uh, he's got plenty of videos just talking about all the stuff going on in the world. And uh, so if you want to check him out, Brad Condon, he's got linked on my front of my channel here so you can check out his channel. But anyway, I feel rested, um, was out in the sun all day, got a little bit of sun, caught some smallmouth bass, and had a really great time hanging out with my bud. So let's get into today's show. Now, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Uh, that pun was actually intended, but we've got down, we got to get down to the bottom of this Apollyon abaddon aspect to the book of revelation and as well as how it links into modern day manifestations of apollo now when we first started talking about apollo i know some of you guys were skeptical but then look how much more has been revealed over the last several years since we've started talking about it what you're looking at on your screen here is the white horse book it's a bookmark in here, and it's in the almanac in the film I Am Legend. Here's an image of it here. This is the bookmark in the almanac for I Am Legend. And, of course, you see it is a white horse. It's weird, though. It has this crown on it or some kind of red thing on here. I don't know if it's marked. What is that, a C? Is that a backward C on there? I don't know. But there's some coloring on this horse. It is a white horse. Many of you noticed this when we decoded I Am Legend. Now, it's interesting because we're going to look at the Revelation 6 aspect to this scene and the zombie apocalypse. And it's interesting to note that there are fact checkers out there covering this and trying to basically fact check the statement that some channels are making that it was the sticker that caused the zombie apocalypse and on a technicality they say it wasn't actually the sticker it was a treatment for cancer and they're right but it's interesting that they would even fact check something like this right so it wasn't a sticker that caused it it was a treatment for cancer that ended up causing the zombie apocalypse in the film but let's break down this scene a little bit this scene from i am legend of course, starring Will Smith. And he's got the book mark, right? So there's a clue about the mark. It's a bookmark. And he opens it to page September, September 2012. There's some other images of it. So he opens this up to page 2012, September. And this, his character name of course is coronal neville and i say that that way because the root word of colonel is corona corona neville neville being the devil now he opens it up to september 6th and he scrolls down and he claims that this is his birthday here's some other images of it here let me show you the birthday he turns and looks to the dog he says this is my birthday as he scrolls down to the sixth entry here it is here on the page september so what does september 6 really mean well 96 is really 66 that's apollo's number we also have the 69 apollo moon landings why do you think they had it in 1969 because 66 is apollo's number the the number six and nine can be flipped and rotated to mean 69 or 66 or 99 it's all the same number 
when it comes to this kind of stuff. So let's break down the scene. Here you have the white horse of Revelation 6-2. He's carrying the crown and the bow in Revelation 6-2. So you have a white horse bookmark. The mark is the ribbon. The rib from a Revelation 6-2. The RNA change. He's also using an aluminum ruler called an alumi cutter. It's made out of aluminum. And originally, rulers were made out of ribbon. You can't make this up. So in effect, this scene contains all the elements of Revelation 6-2. The ribbon, which is the bow. The white horse and the crown, which is Colonel, Coronal Neville, the devil himself, or Apollyon in this instance. Now, what else have we discovered about the name Apollo and the false god Apollo? Well, we also discovered that the words of the Hippocratic Oath that doctors take, they are swearing to Apollo. And that links into directly what we're dealing with right now with the Spamdemic, which ties into the T-Man's Apollo penthouse, of course, we've mentioned many, many times. And now we have more information. These are all of the words in the English dictionary that begin with the letter or the the name P-O-L. P-O-L is the base word in Apollyon or Apollo. Now, as we look through some of these words you'll begin to see a theme. The theme is domination, control, division, false worship. Let me make sure you guys are with me, and then we'll go through some of these root words of the, of the word pole. So we have a pole, of course, P-O-L-E, and we all know where that came from, the snake on the pole. That's false worship after the golden calf incident. In the Exodus. And we have Pol. P-O-L-L. -L. What is that? Well that's determining who you worship. Who is your allegiance to. They take a Pol. We also have polio. What is polio? It's a very gripping disease. Crippling. We have polyps. Another disease. We have polar. Which of course means like the highest place. Or pinnacle of something. That would be the false highest place, right? That links into Apollo. We have to polish. To polish something, which is, what do you do when you polish something? It shines, right? So that's another ode to Apollo, the sun god. We have policy, which means to, um, it's, it's again a rule of allegiance, right? This is our policy. This is what you have to adhere to. False worship. You have police. Again, basically authority, right? Submission. You have pollen, which is interesting. Because that is a seed that is generated by the sun. When the flower opens, the pollen comes out. Which is the pinnacle, basically, of the flowering of the plant. It's the height of the plant. Or, or uh, what would they call that in literature? Rising action, the climax of the plant would be the pollen, right? Notice that this is all about worship. You have politics, right? And what's that about? That's polarizing people, right? And of course, all of the other poly words. And, and the root word they tell us means many. Poly means many. But now we're starting to see what this prefix really means. It's about the god of this world, Apollyon, which is everything. He's everything to them in this realm. So now we have more to the story. Now I'm going to demonstrate to you how the T-Man links into all this. Now we had discovered that the Drum family fortune originated from Whitehorse the town 
in the Yukon. He basically uh, broke down his restaurant bar, floated down the river, and rebuilt it in Whitehorse before Whitehorse became a, t a town. Almost as if he knew what was going to happen. This was his grand great-grandfather, not him, but his great-grandfather. They opened up a Popium restaurant. I'm saying that differently. And they sold women there. These are the roots of the family fortune. They admit it. It's historical fact. Now, we had already established that in a previous show, so we're not going to break that down in detail. But that brings us to another white horse. The Drum White Horse Spa in Ireland. Now, to understand how distasteful and cringy this is, let me give you an example. Let's say that your family made their fortunes running slaves in the 1800s on a plantation, and the plantation was named Broke Black Ranch. Now, would you use that same name for a modern company? Of course you wouldn't. It's distasteful. It's part of your history. It's something you should have repented of. But what did Drum do? He did exactly that. He named his spa after the White Horse. A throwback to the town where all of his family riches originated. Now, I'm looking at this logo and I see all kinds of sixes in the logo. I see crowns. I see ribbons. Just like Revelation 6. Now, here's the site. Let's read and see what's going on at the spa. And then, Now, this is at the... International Golf Links and Hotel. It's, it's uh, like inside there, tucked in there somewhere. We don't know exactly what it looks like. Actually, I think we have a picture here. Here's kind of what it looks like. Notice again the two nines, just two sixes. So this looks like one of the entrances or whatever, or what you get when you go inside there. 290 euros per adult. Two nights stay on the coast. There's your duality. Apollo is a two-faced god, of course, the Gemini. And this is what you get. Now, we're going to get into some of these aspects of what a spa means in a minute here as well. Because the spa has definitive roots linking back to the ancient kings. Now, remember, the Book of Enoch talked about these hot springs, these ancient spas. In fact, it was in the book of Enoch, chapter 66. There's that number again. Apollo's number, 66. Revelation 6, 2, 66. Now, what did Enoch have to say in Enoch, chapter 66, about this? Well, the prophecy says that the kings of the earth will use these hot springs. Okay? They will use these hot springs for healing, but then that the springs would grow cold and the very waters that were used for healing will make them sick. It will be their judgment, along with the fallen angels that are released from underground to face their judgment as well. So the kings and the fallen ones will all face judgment together, but the clue will be in the hot springs beginning to grow cold. So you'll notice a lot of these billionaires and millionaires and people with lots of money have these elaborate spas. So I looked up spas and I looked at the history here in the Wikipedia article. Some of you notice that spa also means asp or or not means asp, but can be can be uh, shuffled. The word can be shuffled to say asp, which is a snake. So here is the ancient practice of spas they were looking for cures of ailments dating back to prehistoric times just like the book of enoch says okay some people would bathe in the water they would drink the water with this high mineral content there was ritual uh purification okay and this goes on and on. we're not going to go into detail of this but i wanted to demonstrate to you that i'm not just making all this up now, let's get into this page of the spa. I just want to read through this. I haven't read through this yet, but I have it pulled up. 
Master of the Art of Relaxation. This is at Dunebeg Hotel. As you step inside, let's read some of this. We'll make it bigger. See if there's any clues here. Always clue. They always leave clues, right? As you step inside, White Horses, the five star hotel spa at Dunebeg, expect your world weary senses to spring to life as soothing sounds surround you. As you return again and again, your body can be enhanced by nature's healing touch. And you always wonder what else is going on in these kinds of places. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. I didn't want to cough into the mic here. In a place inspired by 5,000 years of mystery and history. Ooh, the plot thickens. Bathe in an amber glow. I wonder what that's about. Oh, that's the copper. White horses interior seems simultaneously ancient and contemporary glowing candles set the stage for a feeling of warmth and well-being amenities include a steam area and sauna and deep soaking whirlpools with thermal mineral salts to ease muscles now the whirlpools that's probably what's up with these spirals on here on the horse but you can clearly see that if you rotate this upside down it's 66 let's do that See if we can find any clues in here by flipping the script. Where'd it go? Reset. Flip the script. There we go. Oh, it's not going to let us see it. Oh, well. I was just going to see if there we could see anything if we flipped this upside down. You always find things by flipping things upside down. Let's keep going with this. So... Um, so we have salts, steam area, whirlpools, three dry treatment rooms are equipped with massage and beauty treatments, splash shower, four body treatments from those who want to relax and escape with a facial to golfers in need of post round deep tissue massage. The spa menu at this five star spa hotel in Clare, Ireland. Offers an extensive set of relaxing and rejuvenating services. So this is what's going on over here at this spa. Voya. Inspired by the breathtaking natural beauty around us. And the long-standing traditions of the area. Voya has adopted organic and sustainable ways of creating our products. I don't know what that is. Elemis. Oh, are these the people? Elimus, 15% service charge, spa services, facial, exotic therapy, spa rituals. What's this about? A spa ritual. The ultimate Elimus duo, sensational massage combined with a prescribed anti-aging facial. Designed as an all-over body experience. The 30-minute body treatment finishes with soothing neck and shoulder massage, leading seamlessly into a facial treatment for the remaining 75 minutes. Whoa. The spa ritual. So, uh, this, as you can see, there's, uh, this is a pretty heavy-duty uh, place here. What else do they have here? What's this exotic therapy? A 15-minute booster facial. Pure sensuality to enliven the senses. Okay. Warmed Elemis skin nourishing milk bath is poured all over the body for being cocooned in a comforting foil wrap. This opulent exotic therapy is excellent for skin smoothing and softening. Huh. Okay. So, <clears throat> as you can see, um, now, in all fairness, most spas read this way. It's This isn't any surprise. A lot of people go to these places um, for different things, different reasons. Um, but uh, this is a little bit over the top, in my opinion. Now, what else do we have here? Now, there's probably more to that site. We're not going to 
beat a dead horse. This is their Facebook page. Looks like they're looking for workers. Got about 8,000 people who like the page. Huh. Goes to the website, White Horse, T-Man Hotels. Some of these pictures here. See what they're up to. There's the golf course. Elemis. Oh, okay, so this must be the brand that they're using. What is Elemis? Is that like a goddess or something? Elemis or Elemis. All right. I serum. There it is. There's the inside of the place. Go into the spa. Yeah, I don't know who can afford this kind of stuff. It's a nice room, though. This is how rich people live. This is what they go and do, okay? Every once in a while, people like us, you know, we try to uh, let the other people in our life know that we love them, and sometimes we buy packages for them like this, but it's usually not very often because these are very expensive, right? But uh, some people do this when they get married, you know, that kind of thing. Like if you were to get married in this place, you'd probably get one of these packages and just go all out and spend the money. But, uh, yeah, we're just flipping through some of these pictures. Nice place. Interesting. There's an inverted star there, kind of. We don't want to read too much into this. Because you don't want to, you don't want to lose people because this, you gotta, you can't stretch this stuff, right? But it's a very apparent that there is 666 inside this horse. There's one on his head and there's two here. There's, then there's three more on his, on the back of his head here. I guess there's one in his jawline there. But uh, it's clear that the number 66 and 666 is encoded in that logo. I mean, there's a million other ways you could have done this logo, in, in, you know, without putting all these spirals and sixes in here. Okay. Um, I come from a graphic design background. My gr degree in college is actually graphic communication from Cal Poly and San Luis Obispo. So uh, I. I have a bachelor's degree in this, so I know how logos are made. I made hundreds of logos for people and in in my profession, my previous profession. So when you make something like this, it's done for a reason. You don't have to do it the way you're doing it. And if there was any question, you would not put all those little spirals in there like that. So here's some of the images here. I guess it's, it was Christmas over there. The snow falling. Some of their products. So, why are we covering all this? Some of you may be asking. He's not the president anymore. Does it really matter? It does. Because here's the psychological operation. The sticker was brought to us. It was brought to market as a choice. Rewind your brain one and a half years ago. And remember the conversations we were having when we were called fear mongers, when we were telling you it wouldn't be a choice. And everyone was like, no, just listen to him. It's going to be a choice. Don't worry about it. People who get it will get it. And the people who don't won't. Well, now it's no longer a choice. Clearly, millions of people have lost their jobs because they do not want the sticker. Lives have been turned upside down. Small businesses have pretty much all been eradicated from the country, except for a few who maybe had some savings. And so this is a big deal. This is no longer just fear mongering and people saying, oh, you're just making stuff up. You're trying to scare us. No, it is real. And clearly there is less and less choice every single day that goes by. It doesn't matter who the president is. In fact, the right who claim to support the T-Man are, are now also caving in. They're caving in to the full court press. As many of you have probably already heard, Sean Hannity, Sarah Huckabee are now cracking the door open to basically tell everyone to go get it. Here's Sarah Huckabee. Encouraging, encourages Arkansans to consider getting the T sticker. Now, this kind of stuff makes me sick to my stomach. Why? Because they are working off of low information voters. They're working off of division here. 
They're working off of people's naivete by saying, oh, you should get it, but don't get the other ones. Get the T-Mans because that one's better. Do you see how this works? And that kind of taking advantage of people just enrages me because she knows that 95% of the people in Arkansas voted for the T-Man. And so basically she's endorsing his sticker. Now, I'm the day that I find on the back end, if any of these presidents are making money off of these stickers, I will do a show for you guys. To this point, I haven't find, found a definitive connection, but there's got to be some reason why they push their own sticker. And it ain't about your safety. It's about money. It's always about money. Let's read this. Former White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee said she got the T sticker and urged others to contemplate following suit as Arkansas experiences skyrocketing rates. She's now running for governor of Arkansas with the T-man's former endorsement. Why do you think all this is happening here in Arkansas? This is strategic. That's what this is. Nothing more. People in Arkansas were the, are holding out. They aren't getting the sticker. I think they're at like 20 or 30%. So what what are, what are they going to do? They're going to throw some attention at them. Let's throw Huckabee Sanders at her, at them and endorsed by the T-Man. So now Arkansas is on the map. See how that works? They're petting the kitty, so to speak. And some people, a lot of people are going to fall for this. They're going to be like, oh, cool. We get to have a governor that used to be with, with Trump and, and he's endorsing it and and they're going to fall for this. And this kind of stuff enrages me because they're taking advantage of people. They're mentally manipulating you. And they're doing it strategically. They, you see how this works? So, support your president and get his sticker. Only that one. Don't get the others. Just get his. What saddens me is some people are this uninformed. They actually think that drum sticker is better than the others. And they'll march into a clinic and get it just because she said she asked them to. What else do we have here? So this is the world we live in, you guys. And any time that the right and the left agree on something, that's when you should run the other direction. This this psyop was a little bit more subtle because in the beginning it looked like the right was resisting. But I told you even back then, remember, I said, you guys watch. Eventually they're going to give in too. They're just basically, what? there's a term that's used for that. They're softening the target is what they were doing. Okay, first they had to get the, the left. Did you know that only 4% of the left represent the people that are unstickered. So they already got them. So now they're just going to work on the right now. And that's what they're starting to do. Exactly as I told you was going to happen. Now. This is what else is going on in the world. Anybody who doesn't want it. They're being blamed for misinfo. And this is in the face of. The endless quote-unquote, rare effects, right? We're told these are rare effects. Here they are right here. But they just keep adding up. This last effect here is a catch-all because there are a multitude of different effects under the hypersensitivity reaction. A multitude of effects, and they just put them all here so that the list looks shorter, right? But we know there that rashes fall under this. We know that numbness falls under this. Hypersensitivity. Um, facial paralysis. A lot of these things that are happening. But they catch them all under that. Here's the EU. And they add nerve disorder under there too. And once you start adding up all these rare things. 
they become a little bit more common, don't they? And anything with any kind of effect should never be mandatory. Or you should never have a boss come in and tell you, look, you have 20 days to get the sticker or else, sorry, you got to let you go. With something with any effects, you should never ever be forced to do this. Yet here in America, this is what is happening right now. Unbelievable. Federal, state, medical entities, all requiring you to get stickered to stay employed. We're talking millions of people. Unbelievable. So, <clears throat> there is some hope. You got a few stragglers here and there standing up for our rights. Here's a guy. The Bills, I guess is the Buffalo Bills, Cole Beasley. He says, I'm not anti or pro, I'm just pro-choice. He's got a great point. Now, I'm not pro-choice when it comes to a human being inside someone else's body, but I am pro-choice about what we're, you, they're allowed to force you to stick in your body. Okay? And here it is. He's saying this. He's saying that the NFL is covering things up and not allowing the, all of the players to see exactly what's happening. They're, you know, operating in smoke and mirrors, making it look like, you know, all the players are getting it when actually they're not keeping it all secretive and private when it comes to privacy, patient privacy, when they want to. But other times they just give up patients privacy they just pick and choose when they're gonna have patient privacy when it suits their needs so he's under a lot of pressure my guess is this guy's gonna get roasted in the media this article roasts him and this is how this is all gonna go down so that is the state of affairs going on in this world right now it's pretty crazy you guys Let's go into here, see what you guys are up to. For the road is very narrow, if you will find it, yes. Thanks for modding, Tom. I'm in the chat now. They want you to bow to the altar of the Jabba. Yeah, I've heard uh, Brian. He's, I think that's pretty funny when he says that. All right, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and pop off of here. I love you guys. Have a great day. I don't know what we're covering tomorrow. I've got Loki pulled up. I'm going to... Maybe take a look at the Loki series. See if we can find anything. I guess there's a test rack and a time machine and all that. So we will check that out. And I think that's about it. Oh, hey, look, here's a scene from I Am Legend. Play this out a little bit so you guys can see this. See if it plays. This is uh, Will Smith and I Am Legend. I got it in slow motion. Let's turn the sound off so you guys don't hear. Larry is looking through the almanac. There are the numbers. There's the white horse. In the background, you hear them talking about the spamdemic spreading. So he's Apollo. He plays Apollo. There's a scene where he's doing pull-ups in between two pillars in a library. Talk about quarantine. There's the aluminum ruler. It's his birthday. So, crazy film. I've watched it a couple times over the years. And every time I watch it, I pick up more and more stuff. All right, you guys. Have a great day. Take care and be safe.